What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Verbal Garbage, coming at you hot and live. Today, I'm pleasured by being joined by another gentleman from across the pond. Today, we got Duncan on here. So uh, if you don't mind, Duncan, just tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what you do, and uh, why you came on the podcast. Yeah, cool. Uh, so my name is Duncan H. Uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. um, I'm from Scotland, born and raised in Inverness, but moved to Glasgow a couple of months ago. Wow. Um, and I sought out this podcast in the hunt for, I have an album coming out entitled Butterflies. It's my debut album. I've never released music before, so it's all kind of stressful at the moment. But wow. that started production yesterday and is coming out uh, late December this year. So very much looking forward to it. Though. Awesome. So obviously we did this on such short notice. I didn't get a chance to check out your music, but uh, <laughs> you mind talking a little bit about that? What kind of music it is, where you drew some inspiration from? Stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I always kind of struggle to just set one specific genre because I think it kind of bounces between a couple. Cool. Um, the first couple of songs being sort of more poppy chart kind of vibe. Okay. The middle ones, the vast majority of the songs are kind of, I'd, I'd probably say like indie rock, pop rock is kind of oh, the way nice. to go. Um, and then we end the album on two. Are you familiar with the rapper called NF? I can't say that I am. No. Very, <laughs> he's he's very aggressive rap. Um, he raps about mental health and all that. It's all kind of shouty. Um, the background is all kind of orchestral music and all that. So oh. we we go from all this poppy vibes and indie vibes to then suddenly just two very sort of hardcore shouty raps about mental health and things. Which um, the vast majority. So the album actually follows the story of a boy who falls in love with a girl. Um, is absolutely fixated with her um, and then he finally gets her after chasing for a while finally gets her in the relationship and then the changing point in the album is a song called Toxic which um, I actually managed to find a female feature for um, a girl called Chloe absolutely incredible oh, I thought vocalist. you were going to say Britney Spears damn it <laughs> I wish no um, I, I, I bumped into a girl called Chloe in a night out um and then it turns out she's an absolutely superb singer so That's pitched awesome. the idea to her um so toxic's kind of the changing point of it goes from being this happy go lucky oh guys in love with the girl classic album to ah oh, shit this is all going to hell um guys a bad boyfriend girls a bad girlfriend the relationship is pretty toxic um so she comes in for a couple of verses in that and then from there, it kind of changes to me singing about the girl having to sort of deal with moving on from this toxic relationship and becoming a, a normal, self-functioning person again. Wow. Um, ending with a couple of songs, really strong on mental health. Um, mental health is something that means an absolute lot to me. Wow. So there's a couple of very sort of, a couple of my mates have described them as hard-hitting songs um, just in general. And then the last two is just, really really personal to me i think that they're not so personal that people won't be able to relate to them right. but it is like it's a very kind of i me instead of you her him like it's it's very personal to me so yeah absolutely buzzing like i say we start production yesterday so it's um with a with an aim to release the album by the end of the year it's going to be pretty fucking stressful but that's awesome man we'll make sure to have you get get you back right on right before the album's actually about to be released we'll, we'll kind of read there but um, oh, 100%. So many questions to go off of that. Um, so you kind of seem like your album is more of like a storytelling experience where you have like a story, an arc, you know, and kind of connect it all together. What was the the yeah. writing and the creative process behind that? Did you kind of write it all and plot it all out at once? Or would you do one track at a time and kind of go from there? Because that, that seems like writing a book. Like, where do you begin? <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was very, like, not, none of it was planned out. It just ha so happened that I just kept writing songs that ended up linking into a story um but uh, originally so i one thing that annoyed me with like i've been writing music since i was like 12 i think the oldest song most of the songs in the album have been written in the last maybe year two years one or two of them were written when i was like 14 years old um but like one thing that always annoyed me was i could only write about myself and about my issues and i like and then I wrote a song called She, which was about a girl who's been fucked over in her past, has no confidence in herself and all that. And um, I actually wrote that with a couple of my personal friends in mind. 
Um, they don't know it's about them because I feel like if they knew it was about them, they'd be kind of annoyed. I'm not the <laughs> one the podcast. <laughs> Just kidding. I need everyone I can to listen. Tell me listen. <laughs> um, so I wrote that and was was really proud of myself for the fact that I was able because I shared this song with loads of my girlfriends and oh. they were all like, "This is brilliant! I, I can't believe you've written this." Um, and then from then on, I just sort of found my voice. I actually had there was supposed to be an album called Contrast coming out two years ago, and I thought the music on that was really, really good. And now that I'm making butterflies, the music that was on Contrast, I'm really glad I didn't release it because it's shit. <laughs> it's like the the la- the last year or so has been the best stuff I've written. Um, but I, it was never really written with a plan of making a story. It was, uh, I just wrote song after song after song. And then when I started coming up with the idea of maybe putting everything into an album and actually getting it released, I kind of realized, shit, th- this actually works really well. If I put the tracks in, a, in the right order, yeah. this is a story from start to finish. And it's, that's, it's, that's incredible I mean, how that worked out. So again, like my, my problem when I'm doing these, and this is why I like doing so many with short notices, because you'll say a couple things and I want to go 10 different directions and I got to <laughs> pinpoint what I want to ask and not forget. So yeah. mainly I wanted to ask like, how old are you and what kind of inspiration did you draw from many musicians? Like, were you into pop boy bands? Were you into rock bands? I know you said a little bit of everything. So if you could give me like yeah. the top two or three people that like music groups or individuals that kind of influence you or at least so, made you want to write, you know? Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm 24. Okay. Um, when it comes to inspiration, honestly, I, I really don't know where it's kind of come from. Like, my favorite artists of all time are like Panic at the Disco, uh, Frank Sinatra. Okay. Um, which I, I really don't follow Frank Sinatra's kind of vibe. I don't really follow Panic at the Disco's vibe at all. Um, it was very much like, I, I don't know. I mean, the last two songs, like I said, it's very NF. Yes. Um, when I was going through a really hard time in my life, that's when I found NF and it just totally changed the way that I was writing uh-huh. my music. Um, and I wrote a couple of songs with that and then all of a sudden I just randomly started into this indie rock kind of vibe. Like I've, I've always been into sort of like Fallout Boy and things like that. Like it's It's been something I've always loved since I was 18. But when it comes to the inspiration of different songs i honestly don't know i i've had some people say that i mean they're british artists so i don't know if you would have heard of them but i've heard some people listen to the music and say that they're getting like a scouting for girls and jenny cinnamon kind of vibe which always confuses me because they're nowhere near the vibe that i was going for <laughs> um, <laughs> but i love scouting for girls i've seen them live six times so oh. it, it was quite the compliment to me um but no, it, it was very much, I don't actually play instruments myself. I play the accordion, which is not in the album, because it's not a very album-worthy instrument. Um, Let's go. So I used to write songs just on the accordion. I, I'm having to hire people to make backing tracks for the ones that I wrote on the accordion. Okay. Whereas most of the album has actually been, I know a couple of producers, uh, I think all of them are based in America, and uh, they would just kind of, to make backing tracks and post them and I would listen to them and I would just sit in my room and I would write a song over the backing track and if I thought it was a good enough song then I would hit them up and I'd buy the rights to the backing track so wow. there's not really much of an inspiration when I'm finding my sound it's more just I find a backing track I like and I can just kind of roll with that and so make it's more of just like a creative outlet for you to just kind of use your creativity and put it on paper that's kind of what it sounds like it, yeah it, it's exactly an outlet yeah let us say I, i've i've battled my demons in the past with alcohol depression drugs da, da, da. and the the big way that i've gotten over it is writing songs if, if, if it wasn't for writing songs i don't know if i'd be here today um yes. it, it really is a big outlet to me so um being able to put out this album like even the girl songs they're person like the songs about the girl and that they're personal to me one of one of my favorite songs in the album loser um i had actually so there's a bit of the bridge that goes she's sick of losing never winning all the gods and time sick of being on the wrong end stuck on the sidelines sick of being on the outside and always looking in she's sick of life she's sick of it yeah she needs a win originally that wasn't originally that wasn't she that was that was about me like i had written a song that was i'm sick of losing never winning Uh, so you had a theme and then you were able to kind of adjust the theme and turn into an account yeah, somebody else instead of a personal account yeah because I, I went to write it about myself and when it came to writing the verses and that everything i wrote was shit 
it, it was really bad. Um, and then suddenly I changed it to singing about a girl, and all of a sudden, I wrote what probably the best song on the album. Um, like my housemates that I live with, they know most of the songs off by heart by now, and That's awesome. they always say that lose. They always say loser is by far number one for them. See, and I, I've heard you a couple times talking about you know it being this or being that, but. I feel a huge part and I'm not comparing me to you because you do music and I'm just talking, but it's still, <laughs> you know, a creative outlet where you still have to have the courage to be able to talk and then release it to people. And then it's Absolutely. open to criticism. So I feel like me, I'm, I'm very new to this and I don't really do any editing at all. I just go on here. I don't m plan much. I talk and release it. And yeah, there's plenty of criticism that comes yeah. out with that, but I know in the long run, it's just going to make me better. So I think anytime you have Absolutely. doubts about your stuff, you, you shouldn't really think of it like that. I would just say release it and open open yourself to – I'm not saying you don't, but open yourself to criticism because it's just going to make us better. And I'm sure you oh, do a good listening yeah. to all that, critiquing and everything like that. But yeah, I couldn't help but bring that up because I heard you a couple I mean, times sounding a little negative about it. I'm like, dude, just the fact that you're releasing it for people to hear – you know, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm a very weird person. Yeah, I, I mean, say like when I do my little solo episodes – I just talk about random bullshit. I'm like, man, people are going to hear this and think I'm, but I'm like, I don't care. Like I'm doing this for fun. I enjoy it. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, let, let us say like the, the music I wrote back when the first album contrast was supposed to be coming out before it was canceled. That was at the time, I thought that was the best stuff in the world. And now I look back two years on, I'm like, most of that album was shit. I'm so yeah. happy it didn't come out. But like, Pretty much, like uh, I think I kind of do peg myself down a little bit because honestly, when it comes to the music from the people that I've heard it so far, I don't like sounding like a cocky and arrogant prick, but none of them really have anything bad to say. Like, this is the best stuff I've ever written. So that's awesome. When, when, when I've got like my housemates, or like when I when I originally sent the draft of the album to Chloe to try and get her on board for the song Toxic, I, I got nothing but positivity back. Wow. And I always feel like if you want to be better, then you need need to have people saying it's shit and if my music is actually that good enough that people don't have bad stuff to say about it then the only way i'm going to improve is me listening to the songs and going that could be better that could be better like even loser which is like i say uh, i think it's the best song on the album i was singing that in the shower the other day and there was a certain note that i decided no i can do that note better so i went and re-recorded the draft and i was like yeah this sounds better because wow i think the best way to improve myself is by me being hard on myself well and i think that can benefit you when you're your own toughest critic you know like me i'm never really happy and i like i'll release these and then i'll listen to them like a week later because like sometimes i'm nervous listening to them right away or before release because then maybe you don't want to release it but i'm like well yeah. i came on here to record why wouldn't i release it anyway and yeah, you yeah. Know, I've, I've caught some flack unfortunately for uh some of the things I've said, like I've had people that have inquired about coming on here and then they listen to an episode or two of mine and they've been offended and they don't want to come on, but that just comes with the territory when you're not editing, you know what 100%. I mean? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I, I, I like the raw. It's like, I, I prefer listening to a podcast that is just raw. Like, yeah, like, and that, like that is the presenter, the core being who they are. Like I've had a couple of people come on and ask me, Hey, you want like, use it. Like, Hey, you want to talk first? And I'm like, I, as much as I do to give me a little bit more, preparedness i like yeah. just going on here just kind of because it makes you like i've told people when you go on here with a friend or something you have a lifetime worth of memories that you can fall back on and bring up yeah. something with you and i it's just it's go time you know what i mean yeah, so it I, makes I met me you on reddit like an hour ago like. <laughs> exactly and i'm like and it makes me just be conscious of always trying to have a question or have something to go off with to keep the dialogue going you know so having said yeah. that i wanted to ask about the album you said we a couple times um, who does it is it a solo album with you and then you get the producers and like you have feature artists like Chloe come on or is it a group effort with a couple other guys how does that work so um I wrote everything myself um I sing everything myself apart from Toxic where Chloe's on and I've actually gotten Chloe to write her own bit because like I say Toxic's the turning point where it goes from the guy to the girl and I just thought Toxic would be so much better if not only did I get a girl singer, I got the girl to write about what they think it's like to be in that kind of situation oh, of a yeah. toxic relationship. I thought if I wrote the girl's bit, then it's not as raw a song as I want it to be. Um, so she's now, writing me, her own bit. Let mm -hmm. me pitch something real quick. In, in, in the era and the times we're living in, you know, the gender fluidness is something that's very uh, accepted. Have you thought <laughs> yeah. yourself about potentially playing, you know, Duncan and then Dana? 
You know, you're playing the man and the woman. You go from singing the man and then transform right to the woman and singing her part. Have you thought about that at all? I, I haven't thought about that at all, no. Oh. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, you know, on some shows, like like in Austin Powers, they'll be acting, Michael Myers acting as multiple people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So you could be cutting to you singing one scene, and then you, like, turn your head, and then you're, like, with a wig on, you're singing from the <laughs> I'm just saying, man, it's not a bad... <laughs> it's not bad. I'll message Chloe the second off the podcast and tell her she's off it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so then the obviously the backing tracks are made by people that like I'm not pals with. I just know them as music producers in America. Yeah. Um, they don't even ask for credit. They just say pay the money and they're fine. Um, but in terms of recording, it is actually um, like I said earlier. When I joined, I was using my mate's PC. Um, my housemate Aiden is my music producer. Wow. So it, it's it's been fun. Like we we only started really doing everything yesterday because we were waiting for the equipment to come like we're building a recording studio in this room i was just gonna um, ask about that like where you're doing this is that where you record or are you in the process of building a studio or no th this is where i record yeah um awesome. so instead of having like instead of instead of shelling out hundreds of pounds on like coating the wool uh, coating the walls and these soundproof things yeah i've just bought uh arrives tomorrow i think i've just bought a like thing that you just attach to the mic and then it just surrounds my head Looks like I've got you on here one day too early. <laughs> <I'm just lying. laughs> um, nah, nah, you're good, you're good. nah, bro, you can um, see me. I'm actually, uh, I live in Florida, and I don't know if you follow the news much, but I was actually right in the middle of that whole hurricane that hit. So, like, I'm bouncing around from my sisters to my brothers. So, I'm, like, in my sister's baby room. She just had a baby, and that's where I'm recording right now. So. Oh, wow, okay. Don't feel bad about the non-soundproof walls. I got a Peloton, <laughs> a crib, a dirty diaper right there. So Brilliant, love that. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a even just one day in. It's been a really interesting journey because Aiden's not done recording before. He's not done music production before. Wow. Um, but my friend, one of my best mates, Ryan, he was actually going to be the previous album that was cancelled. He was the uh, sound producer for that. He did music production and that in college. Um, so awesome. anytime we need advice or anything, I'm phoning him. He's like the cool kind of person, but. Aiden's really, really good and quick with computers and picking things up and all that. So even, oh, yeah. even just recording yesterday, we had so many issues. And within about an hour, he had them all resolved. Like he's picked it up so quickly. Um, so I, I'm you, just so glad. Like, how to have a resource like that? I was going to ask, are you a little bit hesitant sometimes when you're you're working through some of these problems to not reach out to him because you kind of want to learn it a little bit on your own? You know what I mean? Like sometimes you. You know he's a phone call away, but you try to spend yeah. an extra 15, 20 minutes to try to figure it out. Is that something you've done? Yeah, I mean, I am um, like uh, the whole thing of recording the album was kind of lazy from me when I was on the phone to Ryan, the co-producer, uh, yesterday for advice on something. He was laughing because he was like, "Other than singing, are you doing anything?" And I was like, "No, like I, I, I write <laughs> the songs. Aiden tells me when to sing. I sing, and then I sit down." Um, but Aiden oh, very much. Thing. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'm just resting my vocals. That's all it is. <laughs> um, but I think Aiden's quite keen to sort of learn things himself. So there's oh, yeah. been like, there's been a few times where I've sat there going, I, I could just phone Ryan, but I've just left Aiden to it because he's sitting watching YouTube videos. He's learning himself. It's, yeah. So it's been really enjoyable for us both, even just one day in. But like, I'm just so glad that he thinks I'm a good singer and he likes my music because if not, he'd be fucking hating his life right now. Um, chances are he's gonna hate the album by the time it comes out. We we yeah. were trying to test like yesterday. We just set up the equipment and we were just trying to make sure we had all the settings and all that right. And the first song on the album, the album title "Butterflies," um, I think I sang the intro to that maybe thirty to forty times last night. Wow! And I made the joke to Aiden that um, when the album comes out, I'm never listening to "Butterflies" again. Yeah, I guess I've never listened to it again. And he laughed and said the same because once we get the set, we've got the settings and all that right now. So all I need to do now is just go in and go bam, 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 just bang the song that way, a couple of takes each. Whereas yesterday, there was so there's so many settings you need to get bang on perfect for it to be good quality that I did have to sing that intro like forty plus times. It was in. So how about we? Uh, how about we name <laughs> that? The working title is Caterpillar, and then once it's done, we we name it Butterfly. How do you feel about that? That's 
brilliant show fantastic show <laughs> yeah i was gonna ask you too about that i'm glad you brought that up like the the burnout aspect you know if you have to spend let's say you have a favorite song on the album but then you have to spend a ton of time recording it for whatever i don't know a lot about the technical side but if you have to record yeah. the same thing over and over will that end up burning you out and make you never want to listen to that song or make you tired of hearing it and not even want to put it on the album is that something that's happened yet or are you worried I, about it happening yeah i'm I mean, I think uh, it, it was something I was worried about. Um, but I think a big thing about it is the fact that it's my own songs. Like, I, like, I, I'm quite prone to, I'll hear a song that I like, and then I'll listen to it nonstop until I'm fucking bored of it. Yeah. Um, whereas I think last night, yeah, I, I was getting sick of singing the intro to Butterflies and all that. And Caterpillar. Yeah, yeah, Caterpillar. <laughs> 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 I was getting absolutely sick of it. And I made the comment to Aiden that I'll never listen to this song again. But yeah. then when we got when we got the settings right, all of a sudden me and Aiden are absolutely gassed. We're singing the song at the top of our lungs. That's like awesome. I went back and recorded it the whole way through just to test it. And so I think, yeah, it's a little bit of a worry of getting pissed off during recording it. Sure. But I think the second that you get it bang on, automatically you just fall back in love with the song because I mean it, it, that the whole album's my baby. Like I, I could never not like it. <laughs> so we're, we're jumping a little bit ahead here, but I'm a I'm a positive thinker and I want to put my positive thoughts out there. You know, if you watch any of the music documentaries, I don't know if you ever do, like any of them on the Eagles, the Beatles, any of these. You know, it becomes a thing where the most famous, the most popular songs become a drag for them to sing on stage. You know, like the Eagles, they got really tired of singing Take It Easy and such. Yeah. Let, let's say Duncan makes it big time, baby, and hits the grand old stage. Is that going to be something that you are nervous? You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? That phenomenon yeah, yeah. with the most commonly played songs are the ones that they least like to do in person. Yeah. But the fans go to the concerts to see the hits. So kind of give me your yeah. thought process on that. You know, what would your thoughts be on that? Trying to debut the new songs I, or trying to play the classics to the people. It's such a conundrum. Oh, yeah. I, I think at the moment, I like to think I'll never fall out of love with any of these songs. But then yeah. again, like I said, the songs that I wrote two years ago and I thought were fantastic, I now think they're terrible. <laughs> so uh, I, I think, yeah, I, I think a big thing for me is because I can be so hard on myself and all that then yeah there probably is a decent chance that if i come out like when i come out with my next album that i'm gonna sit there at that point going ah oh, butterflies was shit yeah. um and, and i'm gonna hate it but for the time being i don't because like my mates laugh at me and think that it's kind of like cocky and all that but like when i drive home from work the distance to drive from my work to my house is my entire album Wow. And I sit and listen because I've got rough draft recordings so far just to make sure they all sounded okay um, before we went and professionally recorded them. And I listen to that album almost every day that I drive home from work. And I sing my heart out to it every single fucking time. Wow. There's not a single song I skip. There's not a single word I miss. It's I, I love my... I'm absolutely obsessed with my album, which annoys me because like i've said a couple of times i hate sounding cocky and arrogant and all that but get this guy out of here man he's making right. me sick yeah like pretty much <laughs> what pretty much what i'm saying at this point is i love myself like nah, man. <laughs> I, I think that's awesome honestly because it, it like i said it takes a lot to put it out to the public and then for you to listen back to it and then for you to enjoy what you're putting yeah. out I, I think that's awesome you know and i think it's so you've talked about mental health and all i think it's so important to love yourself before you start trying to determine who you're going to love and what you're going to do in life. You got to really love yourself. And I think that's, that's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. You might sound like a little pretentious at no, <laughs> <laughs> real quick, Duncan. So I wanted to ask you, um, did you grow up like listen to a lot of music where your parents involved the music? What really, I know we, you said you don't really have much inspiration, but I'm just kind of curious how you started like songwriting. Um, yeah, my, my parents love music. Uh, okay. my mom's right into her eighties and uh i used to i still do sing like dean martin and stuff like that oh, with yeah. my dad that's huge um, man. being grown up being raised around it you know yeah but i i remember it was when i was really young i don't know why but i was just uh i just randomly started like singing just random songs that i just made up off the top of my head and this, huh. this is when i was like nine or ten or something right. and then i didn't really start properly writing music until i was 14 um a uh, girl that i was head over heels for I, I literally knew it i was like it was either about his first boner or a crush <laughs> <laughs> but, 
bit of both. Um, so, no, nah, like, I, I, I was absolutely mad for this girl. We, we did kind of see each other and all that, and then th- things broke off, and um, I wow. wrote... I, I wrote a song called My Girl about her. And I think that was the first song that I ever posted like on YouTube or anything like that. And then oh, I think I, I, I genuinely think I went like maybe two years without writing another proper song. Um, Like it's weird. I can go like, uh, like I say, most of this album has been written in the last year. Wow. But before all of that was written, I don't think I'd written a song from start to finish in like, a year and a half two years um but yeah i mean i i just sort of randomly started writing and then i've just kind of gotten better and better based on how critiqueful i am of music now like i'll listen to chart music and i'll sit and go those lyrics are shit this song is shit like my mates will be sitting singing their heart out to whatever song is top of the billboards or whatever and i'll be sat there going but the lyrics don't mean anything. Like, it's, yeah. I don't, I, I don't really see the point in songs that don't have a little, at least a little bit of meaning behind them. Um, yeah. I've always promised I'll never write something like that because I think it's just shit. Um, so yeah, to be able to sit there and say I've written like an entire album in the last year and it's the best stuff I've ever written in my life is just I'm definitely very, something very to be proud of. of. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because I'm always wondering too with the the generation now. Like, I'm I just turned 31. You're 24, so we're like in the same era, but not quite. Yeah. You know, like you probably know how to use Snapchat and TikTok. I don't. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it always makes me think like if you're you're having kids these days and whatever, what kind of music are you raising them on? Are you going to be showing them like the Beatles and the Doors and Zeppelin, or are you going to be showing them you know Megan the Stallion, whoever the like? Because you know, not to say that there's not talented oh, artists out <laughs> these days. But you go back and you look yep. at, you know, in my opinion, like the 60s to early 2000s and then music kind of just and again, it's all subjective. But I just find that that music, like you said, Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, we're listening to that stuff 60 years later and it's still just as good. Yeah. So it's, I think there's something to be said for that. Absolutely. I mean, things like Frank Sinatra and all that is absolutely timeless as no. far as I see it. Um, you'll never you, you'll never ever get music like that again. I know a lot of people try and judge the likes of Frank and Dean and all that because of the fact that they didn't write their own songs. And I'm like, but it didn't matter back then. Yeah, like Elvis was like that. He was a performer, but he's still Elvis, you know? Exactly. Like, they're still massive. Um, I mean, like I said, I like everything. I mean, my my playlist is just the most fucked up things in the world. Um, Like, I, I go through phases of listening to, like, hard rock and stuff like that to then listening to, like, um... Have you heard of Electro Swing? No, but send me it after this because I'm always <laughs> looking. Because yeah, I imagine yeah. too, like living in Scott, you live in Scotland, correct? You weren't just born there, you live there still. Uh, yeah, I imagine yeah, yeah. there's a lot of different, like you guys hear some of the music that's over here, but I imagine there's a lot of different stuff over there that I've never even heard of or anything. Absolutely. So I'd be yeah. curious if you could send me over a couple of the things that you like just so I can check them out on Spotify. And just I 100% will. It's, um, yeah, I, I think the way that music is looked at over here is exceptionally different from America. I think a big example is like my, ab- I wouldn't even say guilty pleasure. I'm openly public about it. I love Little, little Mix with a fiery passion. Who do you um, love? Little Sorry, can I pause where, that? Uh, little Mix. Okay, I see. Not familiar. Yeah, there you go. And this is the thing. Little Mix, I think they are the best girl band of all time. They're absolutely incredible. But for some reason, they just didn't break the US because from what I've heard, being a British artist and trying to break over to the US is one of the hardest things you can do. Well, I'll send you fucking Harry Styles back and you send me Little Mix. God damn it. <laughs> I'd love Harry Styles back. God damn it. I'd love him back. I'm just playing. I, I've never listened to his music. I can't judge him. I just, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, when it, came, when it comes to like future generations and stuff and passing my music down i i I think like i say panic at the disco is one of my favorite bands of all time i have got i've got a big vinyl collection including every single one of panic at the disco one of them is signed by panic oh wow Um, but then i I think the likes of frank sinatra dean martin country music stuff like that i can i can never get past that like i i get laughed at all so often because i'll go to like an after party or something and i'll get past the ox and in a flash i will have hank williams yodeling 
um it's like because <laughs> i i just love i, I kind of it's the mood you're in you know if you're diverse like yeah. you are you, you, you have moods that certain music cr- craves certain moods you know and, yeah but i think the i think the big thing that worries me about sort of releasing music in this kind of era of music is tiktok has kind of created this whole thing of somebody can get famous for like a week and then you'll yeah. never hear them again like it's just and even then they'll get famous because of a 10 second clip in their song not because of the whole song whereas like we're sitting talking about frank sinatra d martin elvis people like that 60 years later they're still ongoing exactly whereas I, I think one of the biggest things i'm self-conscious about is like if the best case scenario were to happen and my songs and my music was to get big all of a sudden how long am i actually going to be big am i going to be big for like a day and then right. it's going to be over and done with it <laughs> so i'm glad you brought that up because i'm I, my next question was going to be like just from you living, like I've never left the United States, so this is a question perfect for you because you live over there and you've seen people yeah. explode and come over to this scene. What do you, what do you think it is yeah. that has like you talked about Little Mix, a band that was local to you guys that wasn't able to break through? What do you think certain characteristics are that lets you know the Harry Styles and the the other bands break through that are holding other people back? Can you speak on that at all? I don't think it's as much about the actual character because Little Mix are massively loved in Britain. Like, they're, they're, they're great personalities. Now, are they hotties or are they a bunch of warlocks? Oh, they're hotties. Okay, see? <laughs> I'm We're hurt for girl brands over here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I think I remember seeing an interview with them of them being asked, why did them breaking over to the US not work? And it was simply down to um, just with America, you've got to put so much effort yeah. and so much time and so much money into making big whereas britain you've got like the likes of lewis capaldi the the reason lewis capaldi is now a worldwide superstar is because he's put the money he, he's put the effort and all that into it but when he first started off in britain the reason he got big is just because he just traveled across britain doing free gigs and pubs they also ed sheeran did uh, and i think that's one thing that we do better in britain than you do in america or i think shows. there's a lot yeah, there's a lot more opportunity for artists over here because I might end up not being like massive, but I couldn't end up being reasonably big to the point the pubs are then reaching out and trying to book me. And Whereas, I think you would agree on this, Duncan. Like, even if you don't make it massive, if you can do what's giving you satisfaction, it's your passion. You can have people listening to it and enjoying it. Like, isn't that enough for you? You know, obviously, we would all like to be absolutely. free from doing this, but I feel like <laughs> if you're able to get your word out there and have people listening, like, I, I feel like that's a win yeah. in itself, you know? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, f- for me, even when it comes to the thought of getting massive, um, it's not the money I give a shit about. It's that thought of, you know, you see those video compilations of artists, they made it moment. Like, they realize that they're singing on stage and the second yeah. that they realize, holy shit, I made it. That's the that that's what I do. I, I don't give a shit about the money. It, it's just hearing, like, at the moment, like I say, my housemates know my songs off the back of their head. And when I'm sitting driving in the car with both of them and I one of my songs come on and I can hear them singing my songs, it just That's dope, man. Me that gives me like butterflies. I stop singing. You know, the title track, it, yeah, it, it, it does that. that that's a, you like how I brought that back? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, like, I the, the plan is that get the album out and then I am, once the album's nearly finished, Finish, i'm going to start reaching out to pubs and all that and seeing if i can do little gigs here and there but oh man like, I, like at, the, at, the, at the end of the day if i don't get big i don't care because at the end of the day i've wanted to release an album since i was 11 12 13 years old and i'm finally having the balls to do it and dude um, just keep just keep coming on here and talk or like not here but like keep talking to other people and get it on theirs because like I, I don't have a ton of followers but i have a lot of family and friends that listen and I, they're in new jersey and florida and all, you know how it is all it takes is one person hear your song Tell someone over, and they live in Texas, and then it's so that's how it starts, man. And like, yeah, it's the well, same I mean, for me too. It. Like, it's a mutually beneficial thing where I come in here, and even if one or two of your friends in Scotland hear me, like that's awesome for me because most of my listeners are in the United yeah. States. So, yeah, yeah, totally. That that was one of the big things I loved about when you said it was Eastern time. I was like, oh, yes, it's perfect, um, and I, I'm, trust like, me, I'm so appreciative of you coming on here and just telling your story and. Yeah, I mean, uh, I like like you suggested earlier, when, when the album's ready and just better come out, I would happily come back on. Oh, it's... Open invitation, dude. I think yeah. we, we <laughs> talked pretty easily. It was a lot of fun. So uh, I, I would love to have you back on whenever you can. Um, yeah. I don't, as much as I want to ask you another question, we're down to about three and a half minutes left. And I, I'd like to give you this chance to kind of tell the people, you know, where to find you, all anything like that. Yeah. 
Cool. Um, so yeah, my name is Duncan H. Um, I stream on Twitch. I'm a gamer on Twitch, so you can find me on that under Duncan underscore H27. And for um, the listeners, real quick, it's H A I C H. That is, yeah. Um, and then TikTok. Uh, I will actually be vlogging the entire process of recording the album, so you can pretty much record an album with me. Uh, so oh. that is again just at Duncan H. Um, and I believe I'm gonna have to double check this. I think my Instagram is just at Duncan H as well. But hey, I this is why I gave you a little it. extra time to be able to make sure yeah. you get it correct. You know. Yeah. And like cool. I said, so, Duncan, when you're done this, send me all this via our Reddit chat, and then when I publish the podcast, I'll put absolutely. all your socials right in the bottom there. Yep, fantastic. So yeah, so Twitch is Duncan underscore H27. TikTok is just at Duncan H. My Instagram is Duncan underscore H. Um, I think that's pretty much all my socials. Eventually there will be a Spotify for Duncan H, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, um, yeah, but yeah, awesome. I stream pretty regularly playing I stream pretty regularly playing video games on Twitch, and every so often on my streams on Twitch, I actually play some of the rough recordings of the songs that I have um so that's always a nice little teaser but yeah so butterflies started production yesterday um it's uh as it currently stands 13 song album beautiful but i am currently in the works of writing another one so it could get bigger um and this is going to be on I, spotify and youtube once they start coming out it's going to be on everything is the plan spotify is the main one but the plan is it's going to be on pretty much everything you could find it um awesome. So that the whole album will come out uh, with an aim for late 2022, so probably around Christmas. Um, but between Beautiful. now and then, there is a plan to release three to four singles as they as they're finished, just for a bit of PR. Well, so. like I said, brother, anytime you're gonna release a single, if you want to come on here, just shoot me a message, and I'd happily have you on whenever you want it because I'm all about trying to help other people promote their creative ideas and artwork. You know, and that's Absolutely. what you're doing, and I think that's awesome. Hundred percent. Um, last thing I'll say is, you know, next time you're going to work, if you want to take a little break from listening to your own music, check out Verbal Garbage, tell your friends to check it out, I Spotify, will. YouTube, and Apple. Um, Duncan, I, I really can't thank you enough for coming on here, brother. And, uh, if you got any last words, speak. Um, just thank you so much for having me and, uh, everybody follow my socials, follow me on Twitch because I need more followers. Um, oh, no. and, uh, yeah, shit, uh, as the singles of the album comes out. Get it listened to, get it shared. Even if you don't like it, share it to people anyway so you can ruin their ears. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just, uh, I'll end it by saying uh, shout out to yourself for having me. I've, I've absolutely loved it. I oh, my it. pleasure, Thanks brother. So I, I can't wait to um, uh, keep in touch with you, share me some music, and uh, we'll get you back on in a few weeks or something. All right, brother? Absolutely. Fantastic. Okay. My man, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. My pleasure, brother. See you later. Cheers. See you later.